This is a California roll, and it was probably invented in Japan. Wrong. Oh, California? Nope. It was invented in Canada. Oh. This is Chef Tojo. Hi, I'm Sushi Chef Tojo. He helped make sushi one of the most popular foods in the U.S. and Canada. But to understand this, we have to take a look back. It was 1971, and sushi wasn't popular. When it came to Japanese food, people only liked a couple things. Just people eat tempura and also teriyaki. Turns out, North Americans, they did not like seaweed. No, no, no way. Look, terrible, they said. Some people yuck, you know. So Tojo did something crazy. He wrapped the rice on the outside of the seaweed. To hide it. In Japan, people, they busting me. Oh, this is a wrong idea, wrong idea. But people like it. And Chef Tojo, he did not stop there. Okay, everybody eat cucumber, avocado, and cook club. Just I change his uh, preparation, just low. So he rolled these preferred ingredients into one beautiful, amazing cuisine changing roll. I didn't call it the California roll, we call it inside the roll. Word is, it got the name California roll because it was so popular with people who came to his restaurant from LA. And the roll made people think differently about sushi. It was some sort of gateway roll. People starting with California roll, oh, this is very good. Then smoke salmon and tuna step by step. They love it. Chef Tojo's beginner roll was such a success, Japan's Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries appointed him as the nation's goodwill ambassador for Japanese cuisine. And now, sushi is everywhere. Stickers on your notebook, USB drives, Play-Doh molds, wooden toy sets everywhere. Maybe not all thanks to Chef Tojo, but definitely partly. あの、食べたことがなかったので衝撃的でした。体中電気が走るぐらいの衝撃がありました。船寿司は寿司のルーツというふうに言われることが多いです。私の名前は北村敦です。私の名前は北村真理子です。独特な味がするので生ハムのお魚版とかとしょっぱさはキャビアみたいなしょっぱさはあると思います。お寿司も本ナレと早ナレと大きく二つに分かれるんですが、一般的なお寿司は早ナレになります。なのでご飯を炊
It makes perfect sense for us to be eating invasive species because invasive species are an endless resource for food. My name is Bun Lai, I'm the chef at Mia's Sushi in New Haven. 33 years ago, my mother started Mia's, reimagining sushi as something uh, that is restorative of the environment. This is part of the regimen that happens every day in the morning, foraging. One of the things that we're really focused on is invasive species. What if we start focusing on ingredients that nobody else wants to eat, that are abundant and even destructive of the environment, and by pulling them out of the environment will help rebalance that the habitat. This is wild lettuce. I mean, we're gonna serve them with bug holes in them. It's like Swiss cheese. That means that they're, they're healthy to eat and that they're pesticide, herbicide free. Here's a big one. Really can't hesitate, you have to be fully committed to catch them. Let's see if I am. Gotcha. They're a lot stronger than you think. He's really pushing off my hand. Yeah, we're set to go. Let's rock and roll. Great. These snails from Europe, they're called European snails, came over stuck on ships. I feel like you're like a big kid just crawling around looking under rocks. When I'm collecting, it's, it's always incredibly exciting. It's very thrilling for me. Whoa, all right. But when I'm trying to figure out new ways of working with an ingredient that I've never worked with before, or, or an ingredient that actually grosses me out, I like the fact that I'm forcing myself to confront my own prejudices. Today, we went foraging for dandelion, amaranth, wild lettuce, mugwort, butterbur, grasshopper, invasive European snails, a whole bunch of Asian shore crabs, and wakame seaweed and gracilaria seaweed. Are you gonna be mad if we show the whole world that you can make gourmet sushi just using stuff in your backyard? That's what we want the whole world to do, or consider doing, or think about doing. And not only that, this isn't an original idea. People have been doing this for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, way before, before me is. And it's delicious. And it's absolutely delicious and nutritious. Yeah. And great for the environment. Salmon sushi isn't Japanese. It's Norwegian. Huh? Mmm, sushi. Okay, here's the story. Until about 1995, raw salmon was not consumed in Japan. Man. And this was for one big reason. Pacific salmon has parasites. Ugh. So no salmon sushi, sashimi, no spicy salmon, nothing. What? No way. But obviously that all changed, thanks in part to this guy. Yes, my, my name is Bjorn Erik Olsen. Norway had a problem. They had a lot of salmon and too small a market. Looking east, they set their sights nope. on Japan, nope. a country that nope. loves raw fish nope. so much it's willing to pay five yes. times the price yes. for sushi grade. So, Norway formed a committee and hired Bjorn. From 1986 to 1991, I worked for Project Japan. Their job was to convince Japanese consumers that Atlantic salmon mm. was safe to consume raw. Ugh. And this was hard. Just take for example pork. If some guy from Norway came here and said, here, eat our pork meat raw, it's safe, it's really yummy, we'd be like, man, you're crazy. It, it was basically a matter of, of perception. So we had to change the whole country in a way. Bjorn and his team got to work. They made the first ever salmon rolls and served them to businessmen in Japan, which they didn't like Ugh. for a long time. It took actually 10 years to okay, uh, get the proper breakthrough in the market. So there it is. Salmon sushi didn't exist before 1995. Bjorn, on behalf of the world, we thank you. This 
is some big sushi. And if you're hungry enough to eat this, there's a man you should meet. Inagaki Hiromu de gozaimasu. Oh, and he makes the smallest sushi too. Welcome to Anjo City in Japan, home to a small establishment with not so small dishes. Hiromu has been making sushi here for 44 years. One day, a drunk customer challenged Hiromu to make the biggest sushi roll he could. So he whipped out the seaweed and delivered. Hiromu makes several infamous giant sushi dishes. Big sushi means big money. Hiromu's generous roll costs 146 US dollars. And what about the surprise eel? But if four eels sounds like a bit much, Hiroma also has a plan for daintier eaters. Hiromu serves his mini sushi in a matchbox. Hiromu's 